demand for SUVs is increasing as fast as the demand for MPVs is falling. That's the reason why Peugeot is ditching its old-fashioned MPVs and moving on to the crossovers. The 5008, uh, this was once a very conventional MPV, has now become a seven-seater crossover SUV. This 5008 is the biggest in the French brand's lineup. I'm reviewing the GT Line turbocharged 1.6 liter engine and let's find out if the seven seater is worth having. I love the 5008's exterior. It's unmistakably Gallic to look at and cuts a striking visual on the road, uh, especially its avant-garde nose and a triple LED tail lights at the back, which are designed to resemble cat-like claws. Hmm. The Peugeot lion and feline imagery starts to make sense finally. It gets a sports front bumper and chrome grille with decorative chrome inserts a raised horizontal bonnet, full LED headlamps and hands-free electric tailgate, and a sporty rear spoiler. All of these elements add to the car's presence. You might hate or love the design of this car, which is swimming with technology. Um, everything is housed in premium, polished-looking space with leather look upholstery and ambient lighting. Uh, there are these piano keys to control everything on this touch screen, uh, which is 8 inches, comes with CarPlay and Android Auto. Uh, the driver gets an, a digital eye cockpit, which might lose much of his visibility if you're driving in very sunny conditions. So, because of the panoramic sunroof, the taller passengers might lose a lot of headroom, but they will still have plenty of legroom to feel comfortable. Uh, now, the back seats, they come on individual railings, so they slide and they also recline individually. Uh, you also get these picnic tables for the back seats, which are good to have your food and you might also put your laptop or maybe iPad. But if there is just too much pressure, so whatever on it is, it will fall down. All right, so the back seats also have something else. They come with the window blind. So if you want to cut the scorching sun, you can also do that. And there's just one more thing that I need to show you. There's very smart space in this car for a lot of things that you want to hide or maybe you want to put them inside. So you remove these mats and then you, let me show you. You remove this and voila, you have plenty of space. It has some practical safety features like cruise control with the speed limiter, uh, lane departure warning, blind spot monitoring, uh, speed limit information, parking sensor, emergency brakes, and front and reverse camera. Which other car gives you that? This is the 1.6 liter turbocharged engine with 163 horsepower with 254 newton meters of torque. This has the same mechanical underpinnings like the 3008 and also shares the same engine, so the foundations are solid. Uh, it also drives a bit like the 3008, but it is not a 4x4, it is an all-wheel drive only with an optional grip control that modifies the ESP settings depending on the surface and also on the weather conditions. It lags a bit when you put your foot down even though the acceleration feels effortless uh, but sometimes it might feel a bit dull. When you put it in the sports mode it is not as zippy as the CX-9 but it still does the job. The cabin insulation also does a very decent job to cut off the engine noise. So this car has over 20 centimeters of ground clearance, which means that you can drive it in uh, twisty stuff, long terrains, um, dirt sections, and also gravels pretty easily. Uh, the suspension does a very good job in taking care of the mo most of the bumps, but it's not very comfortable with larger cracks. 
Now there is nothing very unexpected with this car and we see a camel over, we see two or three camels, actually we see a herd of camels, oh my god, <laughs> wow, <laughs> anyway, so getting back to our drive, um, there is nothing unexpected except these camels, um, with this car it's actually a bigger, more friendly, more family version of the 3008, uh, with a more comfortable, easy going ride, with a reasonable engagement for the driver. It's definitely built for the urban jungle and you should shy away from the sand. Um, it is not really a dedicated seven seater, it is rather a five seater with two extra seats whenever you need them. And that's also the reason why it never feels big and billowy, it rather feels small and composed, easy to park and easy to maneuver. Now it also has some competition in the market from very interesting semi-premium cars like Nissan X-Trail and Mazda CX-9. But if you are looking for a 7-seater or a 5 plus 2 family car, this one definitely deserves a test drive. Thanks for watching, subscribe and leave your comments below.